In this video, I'm going to share with you 10 telltale signs that you're suffering from narcissistic abuse syndrome. Let's dive in. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tammy M. Joyce. I'm the founder of Tammy M. Coaching and the creator of the Freedom Class and the Ascension Class. Please take a second to say hello and introduce yourself in the comment section below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a new video. So let's dive into the 10 telltale signs of narcissistic abuse syndrome. But first, what is it? Well, narcissistic abuse syndrome is a non-medical term for the state of suffering with chronic feelings of anxiety, fear, and low self-worth due specifically to the emotional abuse one endures when exposed to people with a destructive narcissist personality pattern. And what are the symptoms of narcissistic abuse syndrome? Well, symptoms can include but are not limited to intrusive, invasive, or unwanted thoughts, flashbacks, as well as feelings of loneliness, isolation, avoidance, and a tendency to be extremely alert and reactive to any perceived threat. But there's more. Following are 10 telltale signs you're suffering from narcissistic abuse syndrome. Number one, you're an approval seeker and people pleaser. In other words, you are operating from an outside-in perspective rather than from an inside-out perspective, meaning you're far more concerned with other people's opinions and comfort than your own. You go through life sacrificing your own comfort, your wants, your needs, wishes, and desires in the hopes of winning the approval of others, and usually others who do not have those things to give. And let's not forget that narcissistic abuse is emotional, psychological, and spiritual abuse, right? So it goes without saying that perpetual exposure to narcissistic abusers can and will seriously chip away at our self-esteem. And from that place of not knowing, understanding, or owning our own worth and value, we spend a disproportionate amount of time and energy looking for approval and validation from the outside world. Now, the problem with this is, as I said, we often are seeking approval and validation from people who really don't have it to give, not least of which the narcissist, but also otherwise empathy impaired and emotionally unavailable people. And this approval seeking and people pleasing behavior shows up in your inability to set boundaries, exercise extreme self care, and advocate for your own well being and best interest. You can't say no, even when you know you need to. And needless to say, this is a really big problem. Number two, you suffer from high anxiety. You're highly reactive and rarely, if ever, at ease or at peace. You don't feel good in your own skin, and you're nervous and on edge a lot of the time. Now here's the thing. Narcissistic abuse violates us on many levels. When our emotions, wants, feelings, and needs are exploited for someone else's comfort, preferences, or ego trip, we're going to lose our personal sense of safety. We end up operating from a deep-seated underlying fear-based perspective on high alert and in survival mode. And personally, it wasn't until I was well into my own recovery process when I finally healed to the point of not being anxiety ridden that I realized, wow, that feeling I had had my whole entire life, that was anxiety. It had so been my norm and constant companion, really as far back as I can remember, that it wasn't until I experienced the absence of anxiety that I realized just how anxious I had been my whole life. And looking back, knowing what I know today, it's no wonder. Thank God I don't have to live that way anymore. Number three, you're confused a lot. You often feel like you live in a fog and you constantly doubt and second guess yourself, your experience and your perception of reality. You lack self-confidence, in particular, in your ability to make good decisions. You don't trust yourself and you often question whether or not you are the one who's actually the issue. Now this is an effect of having been gaslit to such a degree that you actually start believing their narrative about who you are and who you are not. And the way out of the confusion is to remove yourself from the toxic relationships, heal and repair the damage done while rebuilding trust in yourself. And if you want help with that, 
you may be a good candidate for the Freedom Class. Click the link in the description below to apply to see if you qualify for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with either myself or a member of my team. Now, this is for you if you're ready and able to invest in yourself and your healing and recovery journey. If you want the pain to stop. You want to find a way out of the fog, confusion, self-doubt, fear, and anxiety brought on by having been exposed to empathy-impaired emotional manipulators who feel entitled to hurt you, and worse yet, blame you for the hurt they cause. If that's you, the link is in the description below this video. Number four, you suffer from debilitating negative self-talk and criticize yourself a lot, maybe even relentlessly. Narcissists really enjoy chipping away at our self-esteem and over time they're really good at convincing their targets that they're the dysfunctional, abusive, crazy one, inadequate and unworthy. And here's the thing about that. As highly empathic people, we more than anybody take on all of that projected self-loathing. Energetically, we absorb it and it becomes part of our subconscious programming. So know where the negative self-talk is coming from and do the work to reprogram your beliefs about yourself and how you fit into this world. It takes work for sure, but it's easier than you might think, and I promise you, you're worth the effort. Number five, you are hypervigilant and you worry constantly about not rocking the boat, making waves, or upsetting the apple cart, upsetting or disappointing the narcissist in any way. Hypervigilance is a survival strategy designed to help you cope with a chaotic and often psychologically abusive environment. People close to destructive narcissists adapt by becoming hypervigilant to threats or attacks. Given what they live, they are always on guard, seeking to anticipate and potentially avoid being in the line of fire. And this hypervigilance you've developed is something the narcissist rather enjoys. It gives them a feeling of power, dominance, and control. Three things people with a destructive narcissist personality pattern literally get high on, for real. Number six, you're suffering from an identity crisis. You literally do not know who you are. And when you don't know who you are, others decide that for you. And when you're surrounded by empathy-impaired emotional manipulators who feel entitled to target, scapegoat, and otherwise harm you, that is not a good thing. So what do you do? What do you do if this is you? Well, a really good place to start is to decide to get to know yourself better, including your interests, likes, and dislikes. Spend some time contemplating what you want, what you really, really want. Figure out what's important to you, including your beliefs, core values, and goals. And if you don't have any goals, it's time to set some and start working towards them. Take time to be with yourself in quiet solitude and learn more about who you are without outside pressure or influence. Do some healing and recovery work so you can repair the damage caused by the narcissistic perpetrators and heal your relationship with yourself. In doing so, you'll learn how to trust yourself and be with yourself and feel good in your own skin, perhaps for the first time in your life. You can build greater self-awareness by practicing mindfulness and meditation. Don't be afraid to be still and simply hold space for yourself. That alone can be a really good place to start. Number seven, you're easily triggered and often find yourself engaged in circular, mind-bending, crazy-making conversations that go nowhere with people who cannot see, hear, understand, never mind validate you. Even if they could, they wouldn't because they don't want to. And that in itself can be triggering. Why? Because you carry so much unresolved and unprocessed emotion that it's difficult to not react to the emotional abandonment and neglect you're experiencing not to mention the deliberate provocations of the deeply unconscious people you're exposing yourself to. Number eight, you feel the need to self-medicate, whether that be with food, alcohol, drugs, gambling, shopping, sex, obsessive, compulsive, exercising, cleaning, or even workaholism. Anything to not feel the full brunt of your unresolved emotions. Your reality is so painful that sedating yourself one way or another is the only way you can cope, or so you think. 
Now, the truth is you have to feel it to heal it. And until you're willing to do that, not much is going to change for you. Remember, the purpose of an addiction is to enable us to tolerate what is fully an intolerable reality. If you ever want to live a happy, healthy, peaceful, productive life, shining as bright as you came to the planet to shine, you're going to have to stop self-medicating and start feeling your feelings instead. Again, you have to feel it to heal it. Number nine, your health and energy are declining. You feel drained and depleted a lot of the time. A really good question to ask yourself is this, has your health, happiness, and well-being increased or decreased as a result of this relationship? Insomnia, depression, hypertension, PTSD, and CPTSD are all very common in folks who have been or are currently being narcissistically abused. As are chronic fatigue and persistent mood swings. Rapid weight loss, headaches, and chest pains are just a few examples. Staying in the toxic environment and refusing to take radical responsibility for yourself, your life, and your personal well-being is likely to set you up for more serious manifestations of disease over time. So just how bad does it have to get before you do what you need to do to take better care of yourself? Just something to consider. And last but not least, number 10. You feel sad, irritable, angry, hurt, and frustrated a lot. And then you feel guilty for taking your unresolved anger and sadness, as well as your hurt, out on those who don't deserve it. So not only do you feel irritable, angry, sad, frustrated, and hurt, but you also carry a lot of guilt and shame on top of it. Now here's the thing. Nothing changes if nothing changes. But there is a way out. You can fully heal. Find peace, get your confidence back, and come out the other side stronger, wiser, and more powerful than ever. But it's up to you to do the work, to give yourself the gift, to decide you deserve better, and then go get it for yourself. It's time now. And with that, I'm going to call it a wrap. But don't stop now. I have close to 200 more videos right here on YouTube for you to watch to help you better understand the detrimental effects of narcissistic abuse and more importantly, learn what you need to do now to heal from the abuse so you can start living your best life in peace, confidence, freedom, and abundance. And if you want to go deeper with me, go to TammyMCoaching.com and learn about my unique tried and true process garnered over decades of experience and learn how you can become my client.